Welcome to our eSignal Weekly Forex Forecast. My name is Jay Norris. I teach trading at Trading University. As always, we need to remind you that trading involves risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. First market we're going to take a look at will be the Australian U.S. dollar. Aussie U.S. dollar held up pretty good in the face of serious dollar strength this week. We think, however, that the upside is, is limited here. You can see we've got some resistance lines here. That purple line, that represents a 50% retracement from that high to that low. You have some risk tolerance threshold levels just up above two. So uh, right around 94, even just above 94, the figure, we think you'll probably see resistance in that mark. We think that'll be an ideal place to set up long-term shorts for the Aussie. Next market we'll take a look at will be the dollar Swiss. You know, it's coming up dollars all week was very telling about last week I think we covered it we talked about last Friday generally Fridays tend to be counter trend days no one really wants to initiate new longs ahead of a weekend players want to maybe take profit ahead of the weekend well that didn't happen last Friday here's last Friday and you had a pretty strong day August 22nd so that was really telling that was something that the market would remain strong on a Friday so it was no surprise that you did it again strong Friday that's a definitely a bullish occurrence for us traders aren't shy about holding positions now they're in it for the long run so you're not going to necessarily see a lot of short covering that spells more bullish activity to come in our book right so here you see a purple line up there that's a, I guess we call that more of an intermediate term target for us 93.50 or so so 93.50 or so will be a, a more of a target for us uh, to come so we'll keep an eye on that next market dollar index dollar index really the the, the benefactor of, of a great week for US economic news everybody knows that the second quarter GDP numbers were fantastic they, they just blew it out great growth that really bodes well going forward and, and I'll tell you why you know you look at some of the sectors the home improvement sector in the second quarter had the best numbers since 2006 that's before the Great Recession so in economics everything being relative those are fantastic numbers now you can look at what's been going on in the third quarter as far as the summer and yeah the the numbers they're lukewarm but you have to remember that businesses are holding their own yeah you're you're not seeing the best numbers but as long as they're positive that means they're positive on top of that that growth you saw in the spring this really spells the possibility of a blowout holiday season I know that that may be looking a, a little bit ahead but no doubt about it when you look at the individual sectors and how everything's going and you look at the Chicago purchasing manager index just came out Friday look at this number Chicago PMI a big indicator of growth in the Midwest look at that 64.3 they're looking for 56.8 64.3 that's a big big number look at right below that uh, consumer confidence 82.5 I mean, that, those are huge numbers so you really have uh, consumer sentiment excuse me so big consumer sentiment numbers big er, early in the week you had a blowout consumer confidence number there it is look at that 92.4 it, it can't get much better than that so the US consumer feeling pretty good all this points to look at that blowout durable goods order too early in the week there Tuesday look at that 22.6 that's just big big growth so all this points in our estimation to continue strength in the US economy and a potentially very strong year end to come all that getting to the point is gonna mean a stronger US dollar vis vis weaker other currencies so here, here's the dollar and here let me show you that the big picture in the dollar will we'll go out to a monthly you know we talked about the the, the breakout from this little triangle here this is a monthly chart we've been basically pointing that out the the big breakout you want to look for would come if this market gets above uh, 084 so that's the big number that's the next big number we look for a move beyond 84 you get a move beyond 84 then you get a move beyond 88 and look at all that upside for the dollar so nothing but upside from the dollar from our perspective we continue to advise to hold longs definitely want to buy these smaller dips along the way next market we'll get to the euro which is really going to be the the mirror opposite of that so uh, weakness no doubt and here again here you see that Friday big big trend move on a Friday that's kind of uncharacteristic Fridays used to look for counter trend moves but in a very very strong market a very weak market uh, 
Friday's become a trend day, and that was the case. You can see he had pretty big support right there for us. He had a long term. That was a, a primary support level. It held initially midweek, but look at it sliced right through it, close below it. You get a weekly close below that big support. Again, you know, it's it's coming up strong dollar. It's coming up weak euro. Let's look at this chart long term. We have to go to the futures here so we can take a look at over the last 20 years or so. Pan all the way out to a monthly. And again, nothing but downside. Goldman Sachs recently calling for 120 in the euro. Now, I think that's realistic. Now, that's that's a full 1,100 points away, 1,100 pips away. Uh, on the other hand, it's not all that far historically when you look at where this market came uh, the last couple of decades. So, you know, long term, we see a lot of downside for the euro. And, you know, we're referring to this environment. We're in really the golden age of currency trading because, you know, you, if you cut your teeth in, in the last uh, 10 years or so in currencies, you know a little bit about how markets move, right? And you take all that knowledge and now you've got uh, a sustained bull market in the dollar, sustained bear market in the euro, and then you can have a lot of fun as a trader. So uh, that's what we refer to as the, being in the golden age of currency trading, right? Everything's coming together for the U.S. economy. Next market, gold. I had a little bit of support level there, and sure enough, it held a little counter trend blip. But, you know, the big picture to me is still one of what? Lower high. This is the lower high there. Here's a lower high of that continued lower highs so I don't think you get mesmerized by these little uh, counter trend rallies in there people on the lower time frame charts they tend to get excited about that I spotted it too I spotted the, the counter trend in here and I thought oh that's kind of neat you know be very very careful playing counter trend to me long term uh, I guess if you're a, a professional there's nothing wrong with playing a little counter trend hop there if you know what you're doing, but overall you want to be focusing on the resistance in this market, setting up shorts at the resistance rather than playing those little counter trend interday moves. So we, we think that the big picture here, pull it all the way out to a monthly. And if you look at the last three years, it's in a bear market and very shallow rallies too. So the market, uh, it can't rally. So you're getting these little short truncated rallies here. We see that as a precursor to more downside in the gold market, but we'll have to see. Gold's a funny market. You know, what are the fundamentals in gold? I, I'm not sure, right? So uh, it, it seems to be one where it's definitely a fear indicator, but if you look at everything else, you look at uh, consumer confidence, you look at U.S. economic growth, anything but fear. So I, I guess that uh, that may not bode well for gold going forward. The last market we're going to take a look at will be the dollar yen here. A lot of strength, continued strength. Here's another one where, you know, you had the counter trend move midweek and then you had the, uh, a resumption of the trend on Friday. That's that's going to be a cycle that you'll, you'll want to keep an eye on now and be aware of because, believe me, uh, strong uh, trend days on Fridays tend to be a pretty good precursor for what's going to happen coming into the next week. So we think there's more upside on the yen long term in the yen. Here's our monthly view of that we, we think uh, 108 on the upside and you know with the momentum once you get 108 what, what's to stop it to, to go to 110 right so 108 we, we believe uh, on the upside for dollar yen hey thank you so much i'm going to give leave you the, with these words of wisdom from my good friend bill williams harmony between your thoughts and actions create a solid trading foundation for sure for sure first you have to bring your mind around first you have to believe in the method that you follow and then the hard part is, it's like anything in life, once you believe in something, then acting on it. So once your thoughts and actions are aligned, everything becomes so much easier for you. Hey, thank you so much. My name is Jay Norris. I teach trading at Trading University. We're happy to be back in the fall semester, teaching in live markets again, getting to interact with the students. Hey, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.